was a young sister that was okay. Um, <laughs> Brother, I will have met me get on the microphone again. I ain't going to have a speaker on this time, brothers and sisters. It's just to really just reiterate the point that I'm making is that we've got a lot of cases going on right here, right here on our doorstep. And it's important that when we support these families that are crying out for support, it's good that we're out right here for Trevon, but it's also important that we're here for the families right on your doorstep. I just want to introduce a sister, Stephanie, who her son recently, just walking like Trevon for being black, attacked by the police in the most brutal of fashion. But unlike many people, as I've said before, who just takes it for granted, well, there's nothing you can really do about it. The sister, even in the spirit of so many of the other, some of the other families I've said, has come forward, has come forward in a very strong way, in highlighting what's happening to her son, but most importantly, is calling upon the community to give her some support. So could you please give a big hand for this courageous African queen, my sister, Stephanie, could you give her a big hand, please? Hello everyone, it's very good to have you all here. It's so nice to see so many young people out here supporting this cause. Um, I'm really, really glad to see you all. It's, um, it's a great injustice that has been done to our brother Trevor and this is an injustice that continues to go on throughout the world and this is something we can no longer sit back and accept as the norm. We have to do something. We cannot sit back and wait on the lawmakers to do this because it is, this is their decision to see that we not look for with justice. So we need to make sure we get what we want. It's not a question of, you know, are we going to get it? I know there's a lot of feeling out there amongst the young people that, oh, there is nothing we can do about it. But to do that, there is a lot we can do about it. But just by sitting back and talking about it, it's not going to happen. We have to get up, we have to get active. And that's the only way that we're gonna make sure we get the justice we deserve. We deserve justice. You know, we are no longer accepting the animalistic behavior of the authority. Because, you know, we are not animals, we're human beings. We are human beings and we will no longer accept the animalistic behavior of these people. And this is why I'm out here campaigning for my son Jason, because the brutality that the authority has dished out to him is unjust, is uncalled for. And yet still, they can justify it, because he looks suspicious. What does suspicious look like? He wasn't even wearing a hood, please. He's just going about his own business, but they choose to pick on him because why? They think they can get away with it and there's nothing to it but that. They just feel they can get away with it. And the cruelty that they went about beating him, it's inhuman. I mean, in this country, we're not allowed to beat horses, dogs, or any animals. So how is it possible that they can go about beating our young men? How is that possible? How come we're sitting back and accepting this? We'll have to make our own laws. We know we do not accept brutality. We do not accept it. Do your job and do it well. You're there to protect us. And this is what we want. We're not paying them to beat us up. We're not paying them to kill us. Do you know, this is just not the way civilized people behave. 
We want civilized people to behave like they are civilized. And civilized mean to behave just in the eyes of the law. This is what the law is there for. And if the law cannot, if they cannot do the job, then they need to be replaced. Let someone who can do the job do the job and do it well. And I think we all need to get on board and make and change the law. We need to change the law. There is no other way around it. The law that is there is not for us. The law that is there is not protecting us. So we need to change it. Yes. And how are we going to do this? We can't just sit back and think, oh, we have no say in the matter. We have a lot to say in the matter. So everyone that is here, I wish they will get on board and they'll just sit back and think, oh, the law is going to do what the law is going to do. No. The people are going to make the law, they're going to change the law, and this is what we're out here to do. Make sure the law is changed. Make sure when they see us, they see a human being. They don't see an animal, okay? This is the purpose of this demonstration. Whether it be here in England, whether it be here in America, wherever it is that they are dealing with us in the world, they must deal with us as human beings, with feelings, okay? And this is what I want you all to get on board with. On the 25th of this month, my son Jason is up in court, charged with obstructing the police. Well, let me tell you something, he didn't obstruct them. They obstruct him. But yes, then he is charged with obstructing them. So, I would like all of you to make it a date in your diary to come down and give support at the Campbell Magistrate Court on the 25th. And this is at 9.30. I know there's a lot of obstacles in our way with this, doing that, doing but. If something is as important as this, then we have to make time for it. So I thank you all in advance. And thank you all very much. Thank you, Sister Stephanie. And just to say that Sister Stephanie is in the process of calling together a meeting, a planning meeting soon, because what we're finding within our campaigns is that there's so many of our young people now who are going up into the courts. And in going into the courts, we really need to broaden out our network in making sure that they get the kind of support that they need so they're not standing up there by themselves against the, uh, the authorities. Alongside of that, the campaign in which the system and all of us are really talking about is accountability, the accountability of the police. Now, the police won't be accountable to us. One of our objectives has got to be, we've got to put a force in our community to make them know that they're not just going to police our community without any reaction from us. And that's what we've got to deal with ourselves. If they won't do it properly, then we'll do it ourselves. And that means taking them on where it's necessary. Now, Brother Carl, who's our next brother, which is coming up, is a brother whose son, who loved, whose son died within the health system as a result of neglect. As a result of him seeking to get justice from the system, they decided to then criminalize this man here today. He's not looked at the issue just about his son, but he's looked at it within the wider context of justice for our community. And so he's here now just to say a few words about his particular campaign and how he sees the need for us to make that wider connection if we're really going to achieve any justice as a people. Could you give Carl, please, grant a big hand. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Minka, and uh, greetings one and all. I'm really surprised by the turnout here today. When I received the notice of this on Facebook, I think it was, 
I was I was a little bit disappointed that it was probably not organized and planned and therefore would not get the necessary support that is necessary for such a an important cause. I mean I think we all regard it as a as an insult with the verdict. Okay, we weren't all there and all privileged to the to the evidence, but the level of evidence to which we have been privileged, uh, we are all surprised about the verdict. Yes indeed as brother Minka has said I represent an organization that uh, campaigned for truth and justice, and that organization stemmed from the death of one of my children, a 14-month-old baby boy who was left to die from dehydration in a hospital casualty, and the, the nightmare that followed from that has led me into a legal uh, battle for the past 20, 20 years. That has led to me also learning the law meticulously and being able to take on the system with the law. And they, unfortunately, have no defense. In fact, we came here straight from a court today in which we put down a history of 20 years of torture. And this judge who determined the outcome of that, that case turned around and said, those, those issues, the conditions that you raise, the circumstances that you raise do not amount to a duress. Now we talked about the death of a child, a 15 month old baby, we talked about false imprisonment, we talked about a breakup of a marriage, we talked about uh, the suffering of our young children, etc. And a continued harassment by the state and this judge turned around and said, that those conditions you mentioned do not amount to duress. Now, the first time we appeared in court on the 30th of April with that matter, there was about three people in the public gallery. So there weren't, as we would expect, people there to see justice being done. However, today they had to find additional chairs and there were two, seat, two bums per seat in the court today, including the additional uh, chairs that they provided. And despite the fact that the courtroom was packed out with people there to observe justice being done, they delivered a, 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 an injustice. So if that sort of injustice can, can be delivered when we are there observing justice, then much consider what more can go on when we are not there. The only way we can have an impact on the system in terms of enforcing rights and our rights is by coming together like this. We need to come together. We, we don't need to wait for the tragedy of Trayvon before we come together. We don't need to wait for the tragedy of Sean before we come together. We don't need to wait for a baby to die in hospital. Your, your cry for justice is my cry for justice. My cry for justice is your cry for justice. Touch, if we had an attitude of touch one, touch all, then the state would be more inclined to deliver justice. They, look how quickly, after the so-called not guilty verdict, that the states have, have announced that they're going to take uh, federal action and pursue a civil lawsuit because they have to do something to stem the flow of emotion in the country. And if we come out with that level of emotion every time or even before time, then they will be much more uh, careful about uh, uh, maintaining justice. One of their judges previously said, if we do not maintain justice, Justice will maintain us, and we are justice. We are the ones that must maintain maintain them. And I can see the signal coming up from my left, so I'm not going to be much longer. I'm just going to say this, because there are laws which gives us the right to do things, and we must, we must use those laws. They say ignorance of the law is no defense. It means, it doesn't just mean, oh, you can't say I didn't know that was the law, that's why I, oh, when I broke it. It means, it also means on the other side, you can't say, oh, I didn't know it was my right to stand up in that way. Yeah? Ignorance of the law is no defense. The preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states, categorically and unequivocally, if man is to be prevented from having rebellion as a last resort, then his right must be protected by the rule of law. So the, the reverse of that, if your rights have been violated and not ensured, if you feel that your rights are not insured by law, then you have a right by law to rebel. 
in, in, and one final quote. Uh, 60 years ago, a U.S. Supreme Judge stated, in a government of laws, existence of the government will be absolutely imperiled if it fails to observe the law scrupulously. Government is the omnipresent teacher. For good or ill, it teaches the whole people by its example. If the government becomes a lawbreaker, it breeds contempt for the law. It invites every man to become a law unto himself. Basically, it invites anarchy. Fortunately, for Campaign for Truth and Justice, we've studied the law. We understand the law. We know their procedures. We're not experts, but we know enough to go into their courts and say, you can't touch us. But the only reason that they're able to get away with what they are getting away with is because their media has conspired to remain silent. But with turnouts like this at court, they could not continue to suppress the truth. We need to come together. What we are all here today for is justice. So let's get together in a campaign for truth and justice. Thank you very much.